Transcend by Scott Berry Kaufman. You are all probably familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs with physiological needs at the bottom. In the middle, you have psychological needs and at the apex of the triangle, we have self-actualization. Lesser known is that Maslow added another even higher stage of human existence at the end of his life, self-transcendence. In Scott Perry Kaufman's book, we get a history of humanistic psychology centered around the ideas of Abraham Maslow. And we also get some practical guidance for how we can build the foundation that will help us reach the higher levels of human existence. Let's go. Hi and welcome to the book lab. I'm Bjorn and this is the place where we bring you the best book recommendations when it comes to philosophy, psychology, human nature and human potential. And today we are talking about Transcend by Scott B. Kaufman. Maslow's theories have been criticized for being too individualistic and selfish and like a lot of science from the West it has overlooked the more collectivistic ways of being that we can see in other parts of the world. But this is really selfish. Yes, Maslow's hierarchy is centered around self-interest, but the higher we go in the hierarchy, the more paradoxes we encounter. Quote, How could so many of the self-actualizing individuals simultaneously have such a strong identity and actualization of their potential and yet be so selfless? Self-actualizing people have both a heightened sense of individuality and a heightened sense of connectedness. It's not a dichotomy, this is a false common belief that people have that it has to be either or. Quote, fact is that self-actualizing people are simultaneously the most individualistic, the most altruistic and social and loving of all human beings. You enter the stage of self-actualization when you take on a unique calling or a purpose beyond yourself. It's usually at this point when the line that divides work and play disappears and you start to enjoy what you do for the sake of it. When you start self-actualizing, life gets simple. Quote, having a purpose often causes a fundamental reordering of the most central motive associated with the self. Things that once preoccupied you suddenly cause you little concern and might even sound trivial." End quote. The self-actualizing individual is characterized by spontaneity. They enjoy the process and the journey. They value solitude. They have few but meaningful relationships. They are autonomous. They are self-accepting. They are okay with ambiguous situations and uncertainty. And they are problem solvers. Pursue a purpose or calling and happiness is a byproduct. But balance is needed for healthy self-actualization. Quote, as you live your purpose, it's worth periodically to reflect on whether your passionate activities relating to your purpose have become too obsessive in a way that is impending your growth as a whole person. Obstacles to self-actualization. Quote, there is a growth-oriented core in all of us, full of openness, love and meaning, which is held back by our ordinary perceptions, fears and anxieties. Self-esteem and actively fighting irrational fears are important in order to reach the stage of self-actualization. Stop worrying what people think about you. Actively take risks, even though failing might make you look bad. Test if people actually are demanding such high level of perfection from you. Doing this will help you stabilize your self-esteem. Quote, People who actually test their self-beliefs are often shocked to discover how tolerant people are with their imperfections." End quote. In fact, being open and authentic increases social connections. No one is perfect, right? And we are more comfortable being with people who are similar to us. Take your worthiness as a given. In the book The Denial of Death, which I have praised so many times, you can read, quote, there is a rumble of panic underlying everything. This is a result of an existential paradox. We are godlike, and yet we are no different than worms in the dirt. Quote, this terror, to have emerged from nothing, to have a name, 
consciousness of self, deep inner feelings, an excruciating inner yearning for life and self-expression, and with all this yet to die. According to Becker and the terror management theory, which was based on Becker's ideas, identifies death as the main source of human anxiety. By this line of thinking, awareness of death should increase insecurity and defensiveness, yet we very seldom see that with people who have had close encounters with death, either through adversity or taking part in death meditations where you contemplate your own death. Quite the opposite. Instead, we see people being more present to the moment, appreciating what is, an increased focus on what's actually important. When we come close to losing life, we start to value it even more. I think Steve Jobs says it very well, quote, Remembering that I would be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make big choices in life. Almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what's truly important. Remembering that you're going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You're already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. Maslow put self-actualization at the top of his pyramid, but later in life he started to suspect that self-actualization was actually only a bridge to an even higher state of being, self-transcendence. The main characteristic of people at this stage is a shift in concern from self to others. Egotism takes a backseat role to helping other people. This is the mode of being where you do what's right just because it's right. This is where spiritual life blooms. Self-transcendent people, they feel a connectedness to a greater whole and a purpose beyond themselves. This is the realm of a religious experience as, uh, as uh, defined by James Williams. I'm going to talk about this book a bit later. This is the mode of being where you have exper peak experiences and heightened experience like awe, acceleration, amazement, deep appreciation. Uh, at this point, dichotomies are overcome and you become a fully integrated person. Transcend, what to say about this book? This is a great gateway book into the topic of humanistic psychology. If you want to learn about Abraham Maslow, this is absolutely the right pick for you. It's one of those books that leave you with a lot of new <laughs> books on your to read list. Personally, for me, uh, I got interested in peak experiences and religious experiences. I picked up um, uh, William James, Varieties of Religious Experience. This is a book from 1903, 1902, I don't remember the exact year. A book I've heard a lot about and I finally read it, so hopefully I have a review up for it soon. It also brings up uh, the import importance of being securely attached. So I wanted to know more about attachment theory and I picked up this book. Attached, are you anxious, avoidant or secure? How the science of adult attachment can help you find and keep love. So I love books like that, that uh, because I didn't know a lot about Maslow before I got into this. And, and now it opened up my eye to a lot of other aspects of psychology that I wanted to check out. Transcend is definitely a book I recommend if you're interested in psychology and human potential. Uh, I want to recommend a few other books as further reading if you like this one. But first, push the subscribe button, like, it really helps me reach more people with these kinds of books. And I think more people should know about these kinds of books. So without further ado, here's a few recommendations. So yeah, if you like Transcend and you want more books on adjacent topics, uh, one, recommendations I, one recommendation I have is Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience by Mihaly, Sixcent Mihaly, I'm butchering that name. Uh, I heard so much about Flow in different books that I've read. There's like 
every ten book I read has a reference to um, his research. So I didn't think I would get so much out of it. But when I read this book, it's very practical. It has a lot of examples of how you can turn everyday experiences into something more fulfilling and joyful. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's on my great books list. It's a list of the, all the best books that I've ever read. Uh, so surprise, surprise, I got a lot out of this one. Another book I think is worth your time to check out is The Denial of Death by Ernest Becker, which is talked about a lot in this book. Uh, it's one of those books that really blew my mind. It talks about death as one of the core anxiety, anxieties of human existence. It's, uh, it's a book worth a look. I have an extended review up on that. Another book mentioned in, come on, where are you? Mentioned in this book is, oh my God, so many books. Uh, the Art of Loving by Eric Fromm. Um, has another take on why we are unhappy and why we are anxious. Um, and it talks about how we feel separated. We have a yearning for being one with, let's say, our object of affection, one with the world, one with the, the crowd in certain aspects. Uh, and this feeling of separateness is like one of the core anxieties. The Art of Loving by Eric Fromm, a book I truly recommend. I'll put a link up here to my review of that one. One thing that I mentioned in this review is that pursuing a calling and a purpose is one of the keys to self-actualization. But how do you find your purpose? Uh, and one book that I can recommend on that, and it's in the cheesy self-help category, it's Built to Serve by uh, Mr. Carmichael. Uh, this book is uh, really has a really good method for trying to figure out what, what's, what's your unique purpose and your why in this life. And I could actually recommend it to you if you haven't found your purpose already. It might provide some hints of what that could be. And a book I picked up myself and just finished, I will have a review up soon, is The Varieties of Human Experience. This is a quite dense book, but I re after reading Transcend, I wanted to know more about peak experiences and even religious experience. And one book that I've heard a lot about is William James' book, The Varieties of Religious Experience, and he's finished this. It's quite a dense book and it talks about the religious experience as experienced by the individual, so it's not covering organized religion in any way. Uh, super interesting and I hope to have a review up on that soon. And last but not least, uh, a book, this is one of my favorite books and I, but I don't recommend it. That's what I used to say because it's so weird. It's, uh, it's actually a really cheap new age book, but uh, I really resonated with it. And it's the it's levels of energy by Frederick Dodson, and reading through this book about um, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs and these different stages reminded me of the energy scale that uh, Dodson describes in this book, uh, and it's just different planes of being, different energy levels that you can vibrate on. It's mumbo jumbo in a way, but it's also a book that really provided me with a new lens through which to see the world. Uh, totally pseudoscience, but I think there's a lot of value in this book anyway for some reason. Definitely a book uh, you should check out if you're open to those kinds of ideas. I think it was very interesting and it's just one of those lenses that you can put on and try to see light through and it's actually helpful even though it's not perfectly proven anyway i'm babbling see you next week for more book reviews i think we'll look at attached next week or i am dynamite a life of Friedrich nietzsche who knows anyways see you next week